We're dialed in. We're dialed in, folks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an extra special episode of Let's Get Trashed. Uh, as you can see, we've had a change of studio. We are now in the uh, the Let's Get Trashed break room at the top of the uh, Chrysler Building in New York City. <laughs> um, we're we're doing that because I've got an extra special guest with me today. Mr. Are you going by Jimmy D? Are we doing your stage name? What are we doing? Yeah, Jimmy D is usually, you know, I inter- introduce myself as Jimmy D because it's what my family calls me. Okay. So when I hear it, I just feel familiar. All right. So, yeah. It's a way to make friends instantly. Yeah. You're, I'm like, just be my friend. Yeah, just your family name. Yeah, yeah. All right. Very cool. Yeah. Jimmy D from a numerous, numerous Austin musical projects. Uh, Bad Thrillers is uh, your current outing, right? Also. Yep. Sleepy Cowboy, Tumbling Whites. What are we? What are we? Yeah, I dropped Tumbling Whites uh, and and kind of focused more on Bad Thrillers and then uh, a solo project, Sleepy Cowboy. And then we we've, we've played a show together. We have with Beach House, uh, Beach Street, Beach Street. Shit, so disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, that was a slight towards Alec for replacing me as, as a bass player. Uh, women are taking he, our jobs. He found a he found a he found a very. Yeah, he found a very attractive core of yes. replacement. Yeah, and I musicians. get it. I get it. You know, it makes sense. I, I'm, I am actually looking to do the same in my band. As soon as someone just even slightly more attractive comes along than Andy, anyone, like yeah. like a drummer that's just maybe just a little bit more attractive, uh-huh. you're in. Okay. Yeah, it's all based on attraction in this town. I'm in. Oh, yeah, wait. you're in is what I'm saying. Oh, I'm in right now. And yeah. You're waiting to replace me. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know I had this gig, folks. <laughs> Not only not only did I not know I have this gig, I didn't know how tenuous it was. I was gonna tell I was gonna let you know on the pod. Yeah, yeah we had I to wait until mics were on. Yeah, now it's now it's official. All right. Well we are let's getting trashed for real. Yeah. Here in the let's get trash break room at the top of the Chrysler building. And we are talking first, we're gonna hit right out of the gate. Um, cause I've got a special intro for our for our next movie, but Great. we're talking about everything, everywhere, all at once. Finally. Fi- yeah. That's not part of the long title. Finally, I've been wanting to talk about this movie for a really long time. Great. <clears throat> um, yeah. So, A24, as those of you who watch this show might know by now, I'm an A24 film bro. They're kind of killing it right now. They make... Yeah, they're doing really well. They're... they're yeah. They make the... They only make good movies. Yes. And they're close to being the only people making good movies. That's yeah. also sad. Also, there it's like every week I feel like I see an A24 trailer. I don't know if yes. they're just marketing is really well, but I'm just constantly like in like informed with a new movie that looks interesting and I don't I don't yes. know how they just hit the ground running and just like have been doing so well. Because a majority what they are the majority of what that company is is they're a distribution company. Okay. So they're they're, they're a publishing company. Yeah, they're or, recently. Or, okay. Yeah, they're yeah they're a distributor. They're sure. recently a studio. I think I think as the studio they made everything everywhere all at once. Yeah. And then the studio also made maybe uncut gems and like one other. So I didn't even know that. Okay, yeah, they gotcha. that's like actually made them. Yeah, where where, sure. where where they were the studio behind it. Yeah. What they are. Primarily, they're a distribution house, which means sure. they go to film festivals, they buy the rights to films that that are made by indie, you know, indie productions or okay. small studios. They buy the distribution rights and put those out in the theaters. Cool. That's how they have a ton of movies and a ton of great movies and a ton of weird indie stuff because they're they're scouring the indie market, looking for the cream of the crop to put out. Well, that's really cool. That yeah. m- that makes sense to me. Right. Yeah. yeah and they're okay. making they're making themselves now. You know, they did that for five or six years. Sure. Just distributing, and they got some money. They got a killer brand name, all that kind of shit. And so now they have the money. They're going to start producing stuff in house. They're making one or two movies a year at this point, I think. Okay. And also like scouring movies as well. Oh yeah, they're okay. still yeah, they're still doing the distribution thing. Cool. That's I believe that's still like the yeah. their primary uh prime directive. Yeah. They could they could come out with a movie just called Brick and it's just about a brick and the trailer would be so interesting that everyone would want to see it. Yeah. Like their trailers are just incredible. Yeah. Like they're just so interesting. And just same thing like with everything. Uh when I saw that trailer I was hooked. I was like I'm going to see this. I can't wait to see this. 
Yeah, I was. Uh, I knew it was something I was going to watch because by the time I saw that trailer, Steve and I had already started the podcast. So I was like, I know that's going to be. I know it looks good. If the A twenty four stamp makes me automatically trust it, I was a little on the fence. I didn't know if I was going to. I didn't know how I was going to feel about it. I was right. Yeah, you like Disney movies, so you're like, it's not a Disney movie, but it might be good. Yep, yep. Long time <laughs> listener to the long time listener to the pod, Jimmy is well aware that I love I love everything Disney puts out. Yes. Um and this isn't that. <laughs> so know, is it gonna I, be, I don't really is, like can I don't it really, even be good? I don't really like movies with like a lot of emotional depth oh, or no, or dude. interesting characters it's Flash, or, maybe. or yeah. Yeah. Um I will I mean, so Getting into it is like I, I immediately want to say, I'm going to take this mic out. We're going, we're going hands. He's, oh, we're going we hands go. on people. Now we're All talking. Right, we're in the zone. It. This is the go off zone. No, it's not. Um, I'll save that for another time. I, I love the beginning of this movie. Okay, and let's talk about. I guess and I missed the beginning of the movie, so I'd love oh, for you to lay okay, down. that's I right. Like, I, I was a little bit late. And I hate that for me. And I am not that guy. I'm not that movie guy. But I was a little late. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is where I kind of walked into the movie where they're they're being audited by Jamie Lee Curtis. Got it. So you got there at Jamie Lee Curtis's introduction. Mm -hmm. Incredible. We lived. All right. So let's talk about what this movie is first off. Just a brief overview. Sure. Made by the Daniels, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Schneider. They're a directing team. They go by Daniels or The Daniels. I'm not even sure which. Uh, and uh, just right off the bat, whatever my th- whatever my specific thoughts about this film, everything I've seen, like I did some research about it, watched some videos with some interview type stuff with these sure. guys. Uh, w- the f- the film this film is incredible. It's really good. I don't love it as much as a lot of people, a lot of other people do, but that's that's not their fault. Th- I just want to say thank God for these two dorks. Yeah, because they legitimately have a vision. They're it's so impressive what they uh, tried to do with such a low budget. It's a crazy low budget. Really? Yeah, that's. Oh, impressive yeah. Because it looks great. It looks great. You want to know how many visual effects artists worked on this movie? How many? Five. That's incredible, man. Five, dude. I mean... Plus the two directors like hopping into it. Because every and, five seconds is a different movie. And all five... Yeah. All five are like self-taught. None of them were like regular VFX pros. They're yeah. all... They're, it's five self-taught VX, VFX artists... And the two directors who know a little bit. That's insane. Yeah, man. Yeah. I watched the thing about like the making of some of the the pull shots and everything, and it's so brilliantly done. It's on such a low budget thing. It's so smart. Um, it's really it. It's a marvel of filmmaking. This, yeah, yeah. This goddamn movie. It's it's completely completely impressive. That's very impressive. Yeah. Um, so. We're looking at, and we have an Asian family. Yep. Uh, mom, dad, daughter, and a elderly grandfather. Mm-hmm. Who's the mom's dad? Yeah, it's the mom's dad. Michelle Yeoh being our main character. Uh, Michelle Yeoh from, you know, dozens and dozens of you know, uh, kung fu movies back in the eighties. Yes, absolutely. And uh, famously in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Also, um, in a movie I never saw, Crazy Rich Asians. I saw that movie, and I cried. Did you really? Yeah, it's very moving. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I heard it was very good. I just never saw it. Um, but she's like the matriarch. She's, you know, she's somebody in it. Um, so, anyway, she's very, she's awesome. Um, she was a kung fu, like, awesome, you know, master, a ballerina and everything. She's, yes. She's, she's dope. Um, seeing stuff at the Alamo Draft House is funny. Because Alamo Drafthouse does all these like the the pre movie yeah. or the pre like warm up to yeah, the, yeah they yeah. put together it's not just like it's not just like Tom Hanks movie trivia uh-huh. just like slide after slide uh, it's they Alamo Drafthouse really puts together a kind of a presentation and this one was like uh, celebrating the celebrating the movies of Asian heritage okay and it was like. 
you know, all these Kung Fu movies and all the, you know, Chao Wen Fat and John Woo and, uh, <clears throat> you know, all these like incredible directors. And then also Harold and Kumar go to White Castle somehow got, got <laughs> yeah. fit into this like montage of, of Asian sure. yeah, important yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah. I get, I understand that those two guys are Asian, but I mean, that, there's a lot of content out there though. Yeah. They is that, I don't know. Is that important? I, you know, yeah. I, I would understand if I met, you know, I don't know. I'd have to ask uh, any Asian friend of mine to be like, what's a more important movie you yeah. know, to your culture? You know, uh, fucking Sam, Seven Samurai or yeah. Harold and Kumar? <laughs> yeah. They're like, actually, just Last Samurai, Tom Cruise. Yeah, the last. That's the top. That's the top. Because uh, I've asked my Asian friends, and they always say Last Samurai. They say believe- Tom Cruise, Last Samurai. You know every what? Time. I believe it. That guy is a fucking star. Yeah. Can you? Are you going to see Top Gun? Yeah. I want to see it. I'm gonna see it. I almost don't want to admit it, but I, I inside I do want. He to flies see it. the planes, dude. Are you? I, I didn't even know yes. that. Doggy, he. That's too much. Flies the plane. He learns how to. He learned how to fly. Okay. Do you think he's gonna die on set? I don't think he's capable of dying because he looks good. He yeah. still looks so good. I think he's legitimately. Okay, I have a question for you because Val Kilmer is in Top Gun, the original. Well, he's. I think he's in the new one too. How? I oh, because he dies in it. Does no, he, I mean, does he well, die? No, he all, he's dead in real life. I mean, like he's Val not, Kilmer died. No, no, no. Sorry, let me let me okay. let me be more specific. Okay, cool. My that was, I was that was kind of a joke. Val Kilmer can't speak. He oh, had he had like I didn't know like that throat cancer or something. Okay. He's got no voice. Um, he's very sick. He's been very sick for a long time, so he, he can't communicate at all. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. He so he. I think he has like a little Stephen Hawking robot touch. The ro- that's ro- robot very, voice. That's sad. Okay, maybe yeah. maybe I yeah he's read, ve- he's maybe very I have, sick. Okay, this is how I get my news. Okay? okay, something to know about me. I get my news from like from QAnon. Yeah, some Q, from you're QAnon from, you get, only. You get your news from and then there's 4chan. Yeah, from 4chan, and then I just I'm like that's the truth. Yeah, but literally most of my news is like a meme on Instagram uh-huh. that's like no more than eight sentences or eight words in a sentence, and I'm like, yeah. that's the truth. All of your, I guess that's what's happening. All of your news comes in white block letters. Yeah, white block letters at the <laughs> yeah. bottom and top then, of top of an image. Yeah, and a suggestive like image. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that's pretty much how I see the whole world. Yeah, uh, yeah, you and me both, and the rest of the country. Pretty much everyone. At this yeah, point. I know. Yeah. The only people that, the only people not getting their news that way are people watching Tucker. Yeah. You know, for three hours a night, which is like 80% of the country. <laughs> His ratings are enormous, dude. It's wild. I don't even know who that is. Tucker, Car- Tucker Carlson? I don't know who that is. He's the, he's like the king of late night, or he's the king of TV. Oh, really? He's the Fox News guy. He's like the Fox oh, News. Oh, he's a, it's a Fox thing. Yeah, he's the Fox News evening guy. Okay. And he's got the high, his, his ratings are higher than like. So he's just telling you like which liberal to hate. Yeah, exactly. In the moment. Yeah. Yeah, the day by, like a day by day. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I wish I could do a Tucker. He was like, what's going on? I, you know, I can't do it. He's got kind of an effeminate voice. Yeah. Um, he used to wear a, he used to be a bow tie guy. He was on, he was the other guy on Crossfire mm. like way back in the day. Very famous clip of like John Stewart kind of embarrassing those guys. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, a long time ago. Whatever. Anyway, Tucker's like massively, massively popular. Um, <clears throat> to be fair, it's pretty funny. Yeah, it's pretty funny how like he's wild. It's wa- he's saying insane shit yeah. a lot of the times, but it's like it it's it's kind of it's it's kind of funny. He just ride. He likes to ride. I mean, I up. think it's funny when anyone believes in any anything super hard. Yeah. Like way over the top. I think that's always funny. He's, like no matter what the thing is, like f- flat Earth, or uh, like yeah. just like I, there's oh. less of those people than everybody wants you to think. Yeah, flat Earth gets thrown around a lot as if that's like a. Can you believe that there's people? I don't know. I, I wish it would make a comeback. Yeah, yeah, because there was like a fun part of it where it's like, oh hell, the hell yeah, this is hilarious. And then now it's like you don't really hear about it as it's much. Fu- yeah, of course. Yeah, I don't like that. I, and wa- I want to talk to those people. I do too. I love talking to people that you know. Ever met some like people that don't think dinosaurs exist? Like, of, of course I'd want to talk to them. Yeah, that's so much fun. Let's yeah, <laughs> let's break it down. How did you get there? <laughs> How did that happen to you? Yeah. Um, 
Anyway, we veered somehow. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, oh, we were talking about. Okay, I, I remember how we got there. Anyway, um, we got there. We Harold and Kumar took yeah. us, took us to Harold, that's, that's Harold the movie Kim, we're talking Harold about. Harold and today. Kumar take you to the Tucker Carlson studio. Yeah. <laughs> Um, everything, everywhere, all at once by the Daniels directing team to, I'm going to say they're best friends. I don't know if they're actually best friends, but these guys are so, they look very cute together. So I'm calling them two best friends. It seems like they could be. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they, the, it's, it's an Asian family. They own a laundromat and they are struggling. Okay. Uh, the mother, Michelle Yeoh is very, very stern and kind of humorless she has a whimsical husband mm-hmm. in k hui I, I can't remember his name but the guy short round from uh temple of doom yep plays her very whimsical fun guy husband and he's adorable in this movie oh he's great dude he's he one, puts on yeah. a hell of a performance yeah he's a he's a tender-hearted man um with a with a mean woman isn't that the way? That's just, uh, just that's all of us. That's every that's time. Definitely me. That's definitely. <laughs> Let's get into that. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that's that. Nobody could say that that's not the case. Yeah. I've always been. Nobody would say I'm not a genuine You're tender a sweetheart. Beautiful man. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm definitely these, these damn women. The important thing for all my listeners to know that I'm not the problem. Yeah. Whatever the situation is, it's definitely not my fault. I will. I refuse to look inwards. <laughs> <laughs> um so he uh they have a daughter young daughter 20s mm-hmm. 21 23 something like that yeah anyway uh she uh has some she's having trouble getting some acceptance from her family from her mother specifically because uh she's a lesbian yeah and she has a girlfriend that mm-hmm. you know um and then they have the grandfather who's 90 they're trying to give him a birthday party in the middle of all this, so they set that up the first 15 minutes. There's a lot of plots. There's a Yeah, there's a lot yeah. going on. Yeah. <clears throat> so the same day as Grandpa's birthday party, they have to go to, they have to go to the IRS, you know, local bureau, local uh, op- office in California, yeah. wherever they are, and they have to plead their case with their auditor. To try to get an extension to pay their taxes because they're way behind on taxes and they're just having trouble. They're having trouble with the business side of it. Um, <clears throat> that's the first fifteen minutes setting up this family dynamic, going through their books, going through like the preparations for the family. The daughter, the lesbian daughter, is mad at mom because she wants to bring her girlfriend to grandpa's party and introduce her as her girlfriend to grandpa. Hey grandpa, I would love for you to meet my girlfriend. This is a very important person in my life. Yes. Mom is not on board with this plan <clears throat> because grandpa is a 98-year-old <laughs> yeah. uh man from Hong Kong uh-huh. or you know, man from China who is not in her opinion is not going to be chill with having He's a not lesbian sexually fluid. Yeah, he's just yeah, he's you know, he moved here from China like ten years ago. Yeah. Uh he's a hundred years old. You know, if you think hundred year old people in this country don't gel well with the LGBT community, uh-huh. imagine what China looked like a hundred years ago. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. The, you know, and, and mom recognizes this and it's just like don't cause any problems. Don't give your grandpa an aneurysm. You know, if you I barely accept you and he's going to wildly not be cool. Um, You know, so it's, it's all of that. And then the husband is trying to do fun stuff. Keep annoying stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He puts, um, he puts like I, those little plastic eyeballs Mm -hmm. with the, the, the uh, googly eyes. Sure. He puts them all over the store because he thinks it's cute. Yeah. Which the wife now has to clean off all this shit off of all of her machines. She's pissed. Yeah. (laughs) Um, he's trying to be whimsical, which she hates, you know, it's, uh, and he's unhappy. He's, we see that he's got a folder with divorce papers. Okay. So they got, they're going to get audited. 
lesbian daughter is trying to find acceptance in her family. And this is in the first like 10 15 minutes. minutes. Yeah, just yeah. like dad is thinking about getting divorced because he just can't deal with this humorless um, you know, unhappy wife anymore. Mm-hmm. The wife is trying to keep the business afloat. The wife's yeah. trying to do everything. Everyone's you, just you conflicted feel, motives. It's an excellent excellent job of you feel for Everybody. That's really impressive, actually. Yeah. yeah that's nice. Because even the, in this like family dynamic, even the stern, the bad guy, which is the, the humorless mom who doesn't unconditionally accept her daughter and isn't wanting to have fun with her husband. Yeah. Um, she's not doing it from a place of like, uh, you know, we're getting, we'll get to another fun husband mean wife dynamic on yeah. our next film <laughs> but uh, so many of those interesting yeah. um but she's doing it for legitimate like come on folks we're we got to take care of business we are all yeah. gonna starve if i don't get this shit figured yeah, out sure um and so they have to go to the thing they they go to the irs and then it, <clears throat> that's where it changes on the elevator up the state up going up to the second floor of the irs her husband changes. He he looks at her. He's got like a different look in his eye. Mm-hmm. He's wearing extra earpluggy shit. The <clears throat> Bluetooth headsets, which are still a thing in this movie. Yeah. And he goes, quick, you have to listen to me. As soon as you get off this elevator, I'm your husband from a different universe. Different dimension. Yeah. Get off this elevator. You have to go into this closet and I'll explain to you more. Don't go to that desk. The whole world is depending on you. And then he like shakes and he like comes out of it. And then he's back to being like silly, unserious, her dork husband. And she brushes it off and they go, she's confused, but they go sit down at the thing. And then that's where you show up Mm -hmm. to the theater. Yeah. And they're talking to Jamie Lee Curtis, who's very stern, putting on a clinic Yes. A great performance by Jamie Lee Curtis being very like <clears throat> you're fucked. She's like you're so fucked basically. Yeah, yeah. But also doing a great job of not having any emotion behind it. Mm-hmm. She's just like bored. She's seen this a thousand times. She's not mad at these people. She's not evil. Mm-hmm. She's just she just works for the IRS. She's she's an she's IRS in human form. Yeah. Yeah. She's seen she's seen a thousand Families and small businesses yeah. get destroyed. She's not worried about you. Just fucking whatever. Just do, you know, she's sarcastic and kind of mean. It, it's it's great. And then that's when that's when the movie changes. <clears throat> or rather, I guess in the elevator when, with the first multiverse thing changes. Um, and then it becomes this space adventure, right? Mm-hmm. Um. I will say this is going to be this is going to seem blasphemous blasphemous I as much as I love this movie and as much as I really appreciate like the work and the heart that went into all this like multiverse stuff and and the way they made this incredible looking sci-fi film with a tiny budget and a small team of people and it's so per- it's it's everything you could yes. possibly want I would have rather watched a two-hour movie about an Asian family struggling uh, yes, with their yes. with their business and with their their daughter and coming to. I would have. I would have liked. I want to see. I, I hope they do. I would love to see like a director's cut of this movie. Yeah, of maybe another cut with like, oh, here's none of the magical shit, and here's actually what would happen in real life. Like, how do we? Yeah, come to this. Sure, it's more palatable, maybe, because uh, then I mean, because there's themes in the movies in the movie, obviously, like kind of throughout. Um, but sometimes maybe like a normal situation is just like, yeah, life is normal, and you can also like come come to alignment with like your motives and understanding people and like what people are trying to do, I guess. But yeah, I like the real. I thought that presented a lot of like real drama. Yeah, and the multiverse thing right now is like obviously very a hot thing that everyone is kind of into right now and it's kind of in the zeitgeist of like the culture i guess for some reason like yeah. or not for some reason probably because of disney and because of endgame and probably because of those things i well, would imagine but. yeah this movie i'm gonna you know 
a lo- I've seen a lot of people saying this. I wrote this down immediately. I wrote yeah. this down in the I was in the theater when I wrote this when I took this note down. So, nobody had this thought before me. <laughs> is that this is this is like Rick and Morty the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? I haven't seen a ton of Rick and Morty, oh, okay. but I know I know yeah. like the I've seen enough episodes to kind of understand like I guess yeah. the flavor of it, yeah. This is this is Rick and Morty in a 2-hour film. Instead yeah. of a 22-minute episode, it's 2 hours and it's about a an Asian family instead of like a white family. Yeah. A lot of people say that as like highest praise. I'm saying that as a criticism. Rick and Morty is too like I, you know, I, it's obvious that this was heavily influenced by that TV show. It's a very funny TV show. This movie has a lot of heart, has a lot more heart than Rick and Morty does, which is sure. good. But it's uh, that that kind of, I don't know. It feels like I, I'm try, I don't know how to say this because I, I it's, it's a movie I like, but honestly, like the silliness of it and just kind of the the flash and just like the fast pacedness of it, or like. Yeah, it just seems like too obvious a I, – I don't, I don't know. I don't th- – I think Rick and Morty is very influential, and I think a lot of people are going to be trying to co- uh, emulate that. Sure. And I don't think you should because mm-hmm. I don't think Rick and Morty – Rick and Morty is not don't, – don't go looking there for your inspiration. Yeah. It's fine. It's, it's, it's fine. It's not as great as everybody says. It's fine. It's, it's funny and entertaining. Um. But it's such this like cultural powerhouse, and I think that we're gonna see a yeah. lot more shit like copying it. Um, and it's just like you don't have to do that. There's other, way- I don't know. So I think this movie kind of took too much from it. Yeah. But whatever. A lot of most people love that that happens. So yeah, you know, I'm def. I think I'm in the minority by s- saying that. Uh, which is fine. That's why. That's why I have this podcast. Yeah. So I can. I can shout my minority opinions yeah um and i'm sure people that have like maybe some gripes or some or want to have some criticism or you know will align with this podcast so i'm sure that's great i liked the experience of the movie um i don't really i I don't know that i necessarily immediately compared it to any other thing other than the cultural like multiverse thing i'm like okay that's a thing that people are kind of into right now like Mm -hmm. that's kind of uh that's kind of a a grab or like something that you could, you know, probably make something successful off of. Um, but it was an immersive experience. Like the one thing I think I look for in a movie is like, I want to forget that I'm like a human being and I just want to be immersed. And it, I feel like it did that pretty well. Like I was pretty into it. Like, Oh, what's going on? Like, ah, now you're over here. And like, I don't know. It's like, it kept me in. I wasn't like, Oh, when's this movie fucking done? You know, like I, that's the worst feeling to have. This movie's compelling the entire way. Yeah, There's not a single a second pace. that's like that's not interesting. Um cuz you kind of don't know what's going on the whole time too. So you're yeah. like, "Oh, okay, this now we're over here." Yeah, it's com- it, it's a completely beautifully done fascinating movie. Let's talk about, I mean, we'll so we'll do we'll do some plot stuff and sure. we'll kind of avoid spoilers a little bit. But anyway, her husband that was her first instance to the multiverse. The the guy on the elevator that changed. He gives her the heads up. She she gets sucked into the the janitor's closet. Yep. They have a meeting there. He explains to her that the universe is coming to an end. Mm-hmm. There's a bad guy that's trying to destroy the universe, and she is the only one that can save it. They have a they do some sort of explanation of how the universes work. Every decision this is here's like this framework every decision you make every time you come to a fork in the road every time you come to a decision all those possible forks create another universe as if you did each decision exactly every possibility right yeah, yeah. so when i woke up this morning and decided to put on a t-shirt i had eight choices i put on the i put on the black shirt we're in this uni- we're in black shirt universe right now. There's seven other universes. One I'm wearing a green shirt, mm-hmm. one I'm wearing a red shirt, one I'm wearing rainbow suspenders, you know, all my yeah. options <laughs> yeah. from my closet. The uh, four options you have. Well, there's yeah. Yeah. oh, there's eight. Yeah, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, there's a bunch. That's that's <laughs> kind of the way this works. Sure. And the reason this the reason this woman, the reason 
our version of Michelle Yeoh is the main character is because her life is going so bad. Yeah. This she is the is, bad universe. Yeah. This is her like but shitty one. She was like a million slight decisions away from incredible universes. Mm-hmm. She was one tiny decision away from being a kung fu star on, in Hollywood. Yeah. She's one tiny decision from being a gun expert at a hunting range. She's one tiny decision. She she made chef, all, like a master chef. Yeah, the chef yeah, one. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, she made all these decisions and she made just slightly wrong ones every single time, which is why she's a loser and her family's <laughs> falling apart and everybody <laughs> hates her and it's a whole fucking thing. Uh, <clears throat> but she's she's very close to these other universes where she's this incredible thing killing it in some fashion yeah. or another yeah right Doing, and, yeah. and the point of the movie is that you can travel with the right uh you know whatever the whatever it is with the right impetus you can mm-hmm. travel from your universe to another close by universe mm-hmm. it's easier to travel to close by ones than far ones you can travel to a close by universe and you can pick up all the skills of that other version of you mm-hmm. so a big one is she learns how to, she pops into her film star hung, hung, uh, kung fu expert universe. She learns how to, she steals all the kung fu, she she copies all the kung fu knowledge from that version yeah. of herself, and then she's back in the real world, and now she knows kung fu. She bumps over to the chef one. She learns some chef, she learns some knife skills. Yep. She copies those knife skills from her chef version. She's back in the real world. Now she knows how to use a knife and can fight this guy with a knife that she has to fight. Yep. Um, that's what makes her special because usually, you know, the version of the version of Nick Tazo that knows karate is fucking twenty <laughs> universes away. Yeah. Because I never even it never even occurred to me to take karate lessons. As I a like kid. that karate is like the alpha, like that's the best version of all of us. Is us yeah. all knowing karate in some universe? I still call <laughs> I still call everything karate. Like, yeah. I just don't even know the difference. Yeah, I'll, I'll be watching UFC fights of like, oh, these guys are doing karate on each other. <laughs> Look at these guys. They're they're twentieth level jujitsu yeah. masters, but it's all karate to me. I you know I don't I can't learn I can't learn anything else. I guess I know the word jujitsu, but karate is easier to say and funnier. Yeah, um, it's so it's just a little disrespectful too. Like, oh, you do karate, huh? It is. It is. You know what? It's like a little slight. You know yeah. I didn't want to admit that, but yeah, I'm you also like, being a dick. You like to play karate? Yeah. Yeah. Saying, t- With your friends? Talking to a grown man who's saying, oh, you're you're taking karate lessons? Oh, you're doing karate lessons? It's, yeah. It, yeah. I, I, know. Do, I'm being, I like that. I I'm like being the, a dick. I like that you do that. I, I'm, I was lying. I know all the different types of martial arts. <laughs> I say karate because it's funnier. Yeah. Uh, you 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 just expose. So me. these people are they're just doing karate in this movie. Yeah, there's a lot of karate. A lot in of this karate. Movie. Uh, but it's awesome. I fucking I love it's very know, cool. karate, yeah. karate movies rule. Yeah. So great you know great effects all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so now she has to fight the big bad guy, who's barreling through all the different universes to destroy the world. I'm not really sure why. I don't understand why either, and I thought that that like sometimes plots feel like okay, we do need to get through the movie, and there is always a monster usually at some point. But when the daughter came in, because uh, I had not seen her previously, I guess. And yeah, you didn't that, see the intro. So when she came in, I was like, "What the fuck?" Like, I guess this is just like they're yeah. just forcing the movie forward because there needs to be a bad guy. The motive didn't feel quite genuine enough. You know, to be to be to become the master like destroyer of universes. Yeah, I yeah. so yes, exactly. And so now we're into. I, I guess this is like. I guess now we're into spoilers. We're folks. into spoilers. Yeah, the bad guy's the daughter. Yeah, from a from a different universe wherein the daughter learns how to be the most powerful whatever. Yeah, and she's just eager to destroy everything and acquire power. Yeah. Which seems harsh. Which seems like a lot for, for, for kind of being. Is it cool if I get some more tequila? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I just because I can reach it. Yeah, if you can reach it, we can even take a pause or whatever. Oh, there's just more. To top it off. Do you want me to grab more orange juice? It's right nope. there. All right. <clears throat> um. Yeah, for like kind. I don't know. Maybe, and. What I'm about to say, maybe this comes from a maybe this comes from a very like straight place. 
So yeah. maybe I genuinely don't understand. Which you don't, you I, which don't I'm know. Completely you don't up. know how gay sex works. You know, I mean, I, I I know the mechanics of it. Okay, I, I know. I just yeah, yeah. but no, I, I don't. Want to clarify it. <laughs> um, the the daughter wants her mom to accept her, mm-hmm. even more so than the grandpa. I don't think she's too worried about the grandpa. I think the whole thing about I want to introduce her to grandpa. I think that's. She wants to feel accepted. Yeah, it more yeah. It, it she's less worried about what grandpa th- will think than what mom will think. Sure. I th- I believe. Um the mom was like the mom didn't want to say the word girlfriend. Oh, that's your special friend. No, mom, it's my girlfriend. Yep. Uh and she would wince or something like that at that word, you know. So it's a lot of that. It's a lot of seeking ex- acceptance. Mm-hmm. I, but it wasn't, so I don't know. I don't think that's enough to want to destroy every universe. Yeah. I understand that it's like hurtful and, and maybe sad. Maybe it's a bigger thing than I think. Cause again, mom was not like, it wasn't a crazy example of mom's kicking you out of the house or mom is, um, you know, ne- not going to support you anymore. Or mom doesn't even love you. Although she doesn't show love, which sure. is a big, which is a big thing, but so it wasn't one of those very dramatic situations. It just seemed like you know, it it seemed like it was tough, uh, and maybe it's tougher than I can realize sure. as a as a dude who sure. has not had Absolutely. to face these issues. Yeah. So maybe I don't. I, I I I'm not gonna say maybe. I certainly don't understand what it would feel like. Yeah, to not have that acceptance for having you know. Yeah, or for being gay, or yeah, right sure. from your family, from the yeah, people that yeah, matter from to your family. Most. Yeah, but again, destroying the entire world seems tough. Mm-hmm. Seems more of us like a you know write a play or go dance or something. Yes, you know, uh, there's a lot of gay artists over. You know, Oscar Wilde. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody was happy that he was gay, but he just you know channeled it in other ways. I think it was more like the fucking children that p- people were bummed out about that too. But <laughs> that's so funny. I didn't even know that that he did that. Yeah. Did he really? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Which uh, is a bummer because I like quite a bit of his writing. Really? Yeah. But anyways. <laughs> uh Oh, you know, he was like. Yeah, he was a gay. I don't know. That's I didn't I didn't realize he, he did that. I was watching the office bloopers. No, extras bloopers. Yeah. Um, Last night. And that part where the uh, Ricky. And what's his name? Not Keith Chegwin. Who's the other one? Uh, Lee. From The Office? No. Oh. Well, yeah. The British Office. Oh, okay. The British Office and, and Extras. Sure. The, the TV show's Extras. Yeah. Or well, whatever. Uh, watch, the, watch the bloopers of, of Ricky in the Tavern with uh, uh, af- after, the, after the Genie play. The Genie episode of Extras is great. <laughs> um, whatever. Anyway. Uh, so... What else? How, uh, what else about where this movie took us? What we got to see? A bunch I, of different. Cool I kind of, I kind of forgave the the plot, I guess, uh, for not being so. I don't know. I mean, sometimes you just need a story arc, and it's fine, you know. Um, I think this was a very focused visual movie. Like, I think it was like very supposed to be that, and did that very, very well. You know. Um, yeah, I liked the characters. I'm really into character development. Uh, I absolutely loved the husband's character. Yeah. Like how he's like traveling across universes to like save his family. It's like very sweet. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would say I I enjoyed it overall. Um, and just, again, just kind of forgave like maybe that, the, the main, maybe some of the more main arc of the daughter just being so angry. That to me felt a little forced. Um, but we got some cool karate scenes out of it so yeah uh yeah i agree i feel the same way i much as i i appreciate like the i appreciate the artistic vision of this movie more than i actually like love the movie sure but i I would definitely watch it again and also i encourage every single person to watch this movie um things that i love and you know the practical effects uh they did so many interesting um visual effects most were done practically. Yeah. Which means in camera, something like that. Literally, 
that first, the very first big special effect. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah, the very first, not a visual effect, but a special effect. I just learned the difference between those two. Okay. Here's the here's the let's get trashed education corner. Um, special effects are physical things that happen in real life in front of the camera, and visual effects are computer shit. Okay. So special is like actual, like a blood thing. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, yeah, right. Blood coming out, sure. special effect. The first, um, the first effect shot in this film is <clears throat> during her discussion with um, Jamie Lee Curtis, the mm -hmm. very beginning of the movie, or the fifteen minute mark. She gets uh, Michelle Yeoh gets sucked into this broom closet. Yeah, the one that she, the one that she didn't go to yeah. by choice. She gets like sucked into it, mm -hmm. and it looks crazy, and it's wild how she's like being transported and like she's dragged across the carpet a hundred feet into this closet. That was not a single visual effect in that. That's incredible. They slowed down the camera speed. Mm -hmm. So the camera was filming at like a super slow speed. Mm -hmm. And then she acted in slow motion. Oh my God. So she's on like a rolling chair and then yeah. her rolling chair gets, you know, she's getting sucked into this thing. So they're, they're pushing this rolling chair. She's like on a wheelbarrow type of thing. Yeah. They're pushing it towards this thing in slow motion. She's moving her Probably arms slowly. in slow motion, like yeah. she's being, like she's being, you know, dragged somewhere. Yeah, like there's a like there's a rope around her waist, so she's bent over, getting dragged away. She's acting all that in slow motion, and then because com combined with human slow motion mm -hmm. and camera being slow, when they speed the film up to like twenty times faster, it looks. It looks incredible. Yeah, it looks absolutely amazing. It looks completely virtual, and they and, did it completely. And how many takes did they probably have to do of that too? Like, they didn't get a lot. The big, so the first big fight scene, yeah, which is a short round. The husband doing karate with like a stapler or something. Well, the stapler, yeah, but also yeah. he had a fanny pack that he put some like rocks yes, in. Yes, yeah, and he was throwing it like that, like that sick ass Japanese thing, um, <clears throat> where they. It's a, it's like a, it's a thing on a rope, and they yes. use it to fuck people up. It's like the coolest, it's the coolest karate uh, weapon out there. Solid karate. Yeah. Anyway, he does that with a fanny pack, and he smokes all these security security guards, and it's dope. They did that. They did that in two, the whole fight scene, the two takes. That's yeah. It's very. They got it on the second one. That's insane. Yeah. Has, has he? like been in anything for a while like not a ton yeah not a ton i was going through because he IMDb. came out like swinging in this movie like yeah literally but like also he was like so good he's yeah he made him he's back to being a star yeah he's yeah. gonna be in a, you're gonna see a ton of this guy i would hope so yeah he was incredible yeah i think we're gonna see a ton of everybody because there's not a single acting performance that wasn't amazing yeah especially from like the family michelle yo Kehui, um, I can't remember his last name, and then I don't know the daughter's name, um, but she was great too. She was so good. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna see. I mean, Michelle Yeoh's had a long and storied career, um, <clears throat> but the other two, I think we're gonna see a lot more of them. Yeah. Hopefully, in more, you know, hopefully in more stuff that uh, the American public will see. Yeah, a man. lot of. Also, just like a very surprising lead, to be honest. Like almost like a middle aged woman to be oh, like yeah. a lead in a movie. Yeah. Like oh, it that was, to it, me was exactly. like and then so that was incredible. Not because the thought of that is incredible, because I was like, Oh, that's very well done. And like we should do more movies about just different things, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, well exactly. Um, that's yeah. why I mean the creative element of the trailer and just like, oh, this is so interesting. Like and she's doing like fucking karate and <laughs> yeah like, and this like she's tapping into because they pretty much give you like the gist of the you know kind of the movie and the trailer and like just yeah i was hooked i was like this is so interesting and original you yeah know? no you're absolutely right having a middle-aged chinese hong kong woman yeah as, as a, a lead as the lead in a film first of all the crazy that we even have to be like that's, that's so weird, rare but yeah but also me and Everybody, me and all my viewers, shout out the <laughs> shout out the shout out the trash pack. 
I don't know what I don't. I really like the it. trash bag. Is it really? Yeah. I think it's a bad name. I'll come up with something better. Okay. Um. <clears throat> anyway, I'm tired of seeing hot twenty year olds. Yeah. Be the stars in everything. Yeah. This shit is, and it never works. Yeah. It, it's right. It's always yeah. it's always shallow nonsense. Um, you know, all your problems revolve around like the you know. You you got in some you got in a fight with your hot boyfriend that you'd want to have sex with. It's like, why it's why I'm not watching. What's the fucking show that everyone's watching right now? Oh, Euphoria. Yeah, dude. We're, we're hot teenager, hot hot teenagers with money taking drugs. We've done that movie. We did like, that TV dude, show. I don't. That was the OC. That was nine hundred two one zero. That dude. was yeah. you know. Um, this one's on HBO, so they're allowed to say fuck, which they couldn't say on nine hundred two one zero. You know, Steve Perry couldn't say fuck on CBS or whatever fucking channel that was on. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Luke Perry. I say Steve Perry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Steve Perry Steve was Perry. Steve Perry was in nine oh two one oh. Just this trying just day. wanting to say fuck, but yeah. couldn't. Um Luke. Uh anyway, yeah, exactly. It just you know actually having adults do a ha- having adults face adult problems again. Yeah, an actual dilemma. Which is why I like the first fifteen minutes of this movie the most. Because I was so thrilled to be seeing real humans deal with adult problems and then it became sci-fi and it was beautiful and charming but you know yeah it wasn't it wasn't it stopped it, they were still real adults but they stopped dealing with like actual adult problems they started dealing with you know interdimensional space karate did you feel like because it kind of is like a cerebral thing too. Like, oh, could my life be different if I had made this decision? Like, were you kind of experiencing that too a little oh, bit? Yeah. Because I think that was like a little bit of the purpose of it, right? It's like, oh, maybe you have a thing. You could, you could have done karate. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's. A, I spend twenty four hours a day thinking about how my life would be different <laughs> if I had made different choices. So I didn't I didn't need this movie to yeah. reinforce that for me, but I imagine that might have been a revelation for a few people. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like I was just sitting there, you know, uh, the the different space dimension husband is being like, your life could have been totally, you know, she's like, my life could have been totally different if I'd made it's different like, yeah, choices. You're a fucking loser. And I'm just like, you and me both, sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm I'm. Am right I in there. the alpha I'm verse? Right, yeah, I'm Which right there with you. In? Yeah. Yeah, if there's a better version of me out there, fucking wake me up. Just come kill me. Yeah, just just, <laughs> just shoot me with a gun. Yeah, just just show up, just pop into my brains and just just end it. Just go, not this one, pal. Yeah. Bam. Yeah, let's go through I speak on behalf of all the multiverse Nicks. Yeah, this is consent. Just find yeah, I'm I'm the le- I am the leader. I'm speaking for all of us. Just find find the ones where it sucks and just just yeah, end just, it for us. This is not going to We'll just go down to the ten percent of you that are like successful, <laughs> killing it. Whichever one of whichever version of me has a pool gets to live. Yeah, if there's a pool in the verse, I'm I'm down. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I assume that was part of it. Like the the writing was good. It, it was, was great. good. Yeah, it's it, just the pace of maybe that one thing I had a problem with. But well, I just didn't think the bad. I didn't think the bad guy. Or I didn't think the daughter's motivation was strong enough and maybe I have to rewatch it um again i watched this movie when it first came out so I'm, I'm weeks behind sure the other um <clears throat> yeah and and like at the a very emotional scene kind of at the end and again we're still in spoilers folks is um when real life mom and real life daughter confront each other mm-hmm. the party's kind of gone awry they're in the. They're still, the fight is still kind of going on, but she's back at the laundromat, and they have that big. They have a big um, confrontate confrontation at the end. Outside, they're crying and kind of being mean to each other, and the daughter's like, you know, why don't you go somewhere? I think the daughter's kind of self aware. I think the yeah. daughter at this point realizes that she's been in. I think it's. I think it's. They've both the mother and daughter have been in multiple universes. Yeah. So they're both kind of hip to it. Sure. Whereas the dad is watching this from the side being like, why why is my wife being like this? <laughs> why is my yeah. what is going on with these two? You know, and he doesn't have he doesn't have a dude in his life to That's the thing. I bet you women travel multiple multiple universes all the time mm-hmm. and actually experience all this kind of shit and dudes get to just, just hang out and out. be like, you know, they're like, what are these 
What are these what women are you doing? talking about? What are these women blathering about? Yeah. <laughs> They're having interuniversal conversations and then you conflicts know, from yeah. different universes. If you don't have a if you don't have a dude around to just be like, let's just, you know, just put googly eyes on it. Yeah, just what are these broads doing? Just yeah. ag- just ignore their nonsense. Um he didn't have a he didn't have anybody to bounce that off of. Anyway, she's like, why don't you go somewhere where your daughter's more than more than this, like more than what I am. And it's like more than what? That's the thing is she the daughter's not a disappointment in any way. Sure. Um, I mean, unless they're just kind of ignoring the fact that she's lesbian, she's just not being acknowledged or confirmed. It seems right. That's right. kind of the, the gist I'm getting. Yeah, but yeah. but I would have I I think it would have been stronger if they had made the daughter like. In addition to you know the the, the lesbian thing being accepted, but maybe that the lesbian unacceptance thing, if that had led her down a, a another destructive path. Mm-hmm. Not actually, not destructive as in I'm going to kill the world, but like, you know, maybe she was doing some sort of drugs or had an alcohol problem. Sure. We didn't see, we didn't see a second thing to... Like a more self, or or like, not that that's, but like maybe some self-destructive things that could maybe make her darker. Yeah, think? Is right. Is that what you mean? Exactly. Or? We didn't, we didn't see, we didn't see her have a flaw. Yeah. The yeah. real life version. We didn't see her have a flaw. Sure. Um, uh, maybe as a result of, uh, of of not being accepted. Yeah, it's a very like sober minded dilemma, like of like, yeah. oh, it's really just is about that thing, you know? Right. And then she's and crying, that, yeah. and but that's the thing is she's totally in the right. Sure. Which makes it, which which makes it, oh, well, you know, the mom's like, you never, you don't call enough, you know, the <clears throat> mom saying a few things. Mom also calls her like, yeah, you have, you've you've gained weight and you don't call me enough. <laughs> All this kind of stuff, but there's that's the thing is there's nothing that's like <clears throat> it. It would have given the it would have given the daughter more depth to be like, you know, to actually have some real, not some real problems, but some but, but some other things to ha- maybe to have some to have some problems that were a result of this root cause because that's her. what ha- that's probably what would happen in real life. You know, like just yeah, you're, not, you would cope in a weird way. Yeah, you or cope something. in a weird yeah. way. Maybe it's self destructive, mm-hmm. and that that furthers the rift between you and your mom. Yeah. Um, also, how did how did the daughter even learn about the multiverse thing in the first place? From the other universe, somebody tapped. She tapped into herself. Yeah, it's because in one of the the in one of the universes. Michelle Yeoh is the one who invented multiverse travel. Gotcha. And her daughter like took it over. Okay. And and so it's from that Stole universe. The tech. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. So she her daughter is a lesbian in every universe and they have this rift in every universe. That's the other thing. The, you know what I mean? That's the other thing. There's yeah. there's the ver- there's the version of so the very funny scene with the hot dog hands. Yeah. The <laughs> the hot dog universe where uh Michelle Yeoh and Jamie Lee Curtis are lesbian lovers, mm-hmm. and they have hot dog fingers because they were they evolved that way. Yeah. It's a very funny From play the, on two thousand one. Yeah. Uh, that was I mean it's a very funny. It, there's a lot of very funny scenes. It's a very funny movie. It's a goofy ass movie. Yeah, it's silly. Like, it's, it's great. It's very humorous. Like, yeah, the whole time it's 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 silly. The so there is a there is a universe wherein Michelle Yeoh, the original universe, she's straight has a husband and a daughter okay there's another universe there's at least one where she's a lesbian with jamie lee curtis Mm -hmm. and they live together and they don't have tax problems they don't fight over taxes so we don't see we don't see another universe where like the daughter is like straight and you know quote unquote a well-behaved yeah girl that the family we don't see that other universe they're all the same. She's like the same in every yeah, one. Yeah, very. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if your daughter is a lesbian in every universe, you should just accept it. You know, <laughs> like, she's. You know what I mean? <laughs> if your daughter's a lesbian in this one, yeah, you go should ahead, accept. Go that. ahead and just you be cool. That. Just be cool with it. She's yeah. fine. Uh, but yeah, it, there's not. Believe it or not, there's not another universe coming where you're getting what you want. You're only if you don't have what you want. You're not getting it somewhere else. Yeah. Um, no matter what the thing is. Uh, 
Yeah. So anyway, I would have liked a little. I think. I think. I think it would have served the daughter's character more mm. to have to have some more flaws that were obvious to us. Yeah. Not more flaws because she doesn't have a flaw. Um, being lesbian is not a flaw. That's just a. That's the inciting event that causes tension within her family. But that could have resulted in like her coping in, like you said, coping in unhealthy ways. Those are flaws. Yes. Uh, alcoholism, doing drugs, wh- whatever. Um, anyway. Uh, and that's a hard thing to like reconcile when you were talking about a multiverse. Like, I guess you could just, anything could be anything. So it's like, mm-hmm. it's hard to like maybe make that a perfect bow tied, like, you know, in ending or like way of think or like the way a plot should go. But, um, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I agree with you, man. Yeah, that could have been that could have been a little deeper, and kind of explored a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, the 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 character work on this is what I love the most. Yeah, and I think the most character work happened in the first fifteen minutes. It became space adventure after that, which is great, and it was beautifully done. And I can't say enough good things about it. But that's not my f- space adventure is not what I love. Sure. Um, you know interesting people having real stories it is what i love yeah um so anyway cool we'll end spoiler stuff there i want to do a few more like wrap up things sure. talking about uh how great this movie was all right and we're back we're sorry back, folks baby a little bit of uh technical difficulties here at the let's get trash break room at the top of the chrysler building and Nick the, had to do a drug deal is what really happened he had to yeah he uh handed off Many pounds of drugs. I wasn't sure what, but you know, um, there was a lot of you know colorful, color, colorful characters that came by, and uh, let's just say made a good sale. Yeah, I'm responsible for the opiate crisis in this country. Yeah, a lot of people say that about you. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing they say about you. All right, um, <clears throat> so we're gonna wrap this up. We've only got a couple minutes left. The photography, not even the cinematography, like the color. Yes, I mean, uh, color, okay. the coloring was great, but more importantly, so they they do all these montages. As as Michelle Yeoh is traveling from one dimension to another, she has to go through a dozen other dimensions, and we see the different versions of her in every dimension. Sure. So, and, and so she's wearing the costume department and the photography department are incredible because they have a million, I mean, you know, they have thousands of photos of her face wearing a thousand different costumes. As so, as she transports from the regular universe to Chef Universe, you see her face, and you see, you see fireman costume, police costume, yes. stripper costume, blah 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 costume, done a costume, whatever costume, and then she's boom, she's in Chef World, and so there's so much like uh, all the cuts to like the different versions yeah, of herself, yeah, 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 all those montages, and so there's just so many photos of 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 her. So many costumes and stuff like that, and it's such a low budget but beautiful way to do this like transition. Also, is this the most involved acting that you could do? Like, that that's a lot of acting, like with and and costume changes and like I mean, like oh, incredibly yeah. like involved like situation. Yeah, it's it's and they did for it. someone that's been like you see her and you're like, who is that? I know her. But someone who's not on the forefront of like stardom, mm-hmm. and then to just like kill a movie like this, just absolutely slay. They did, yeah. They did. They everything about this movie is real. Yeah, as far as like the filming, everything is real. They really did the acting. They really, they really wore all these costumes. There's very, very little green screen in this, which is incredible. Yeah, you know, if if this was a, <laughs> if this was a Marvel movie, yeah, she everything would be green screen. She'd be talking to a little tennis ball yeah. that's also green. Yeah. That she'd be acting to a tennis ball, and then the tennis ball would, in post-production, become the super bad guy or whatever sure. the fuck. It's, this was completely real. The only times they used green screen was for little things that they had to do and little cleanup. Uh, you should watch... I'll, I'll I'll put a link in on under the YouTube description or whatever. I'll put links to some of the incredible videos I watched about the Daniels and how they made this. Again, like I said at the beginning of this pod, thank God for these two dorks for caring this much and yeah. making a movie that 
is great, and it's A twenty four's highest grossing feature. Really, fifty million dollars. Okay, yeah, it beat Uncut Gems, and it really, beat, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, A twenty four. Okay, maybe with Uncut Gems, I think people. I to be honest, I didn't know that A twenty four did Uncut Gems, mm-hmm. but I know, I know, or I became familiar that Safdie Brothers is now a household name in my mind. And then so I watched yeah, Robert Pattinson's movie. Good Time. Good Time. I've, Absolutely. You know, the, they have like sort of like a cringy thing going on. It, not cringy like in a bad way, but just like an anxious, like intense thing that they always do. That's like I love it. a lot of fun and just a good ass time, really. Like I want to feel something. Yes. If I'm, or, the, or not even if I want to, but the fact that I can feel something yeah. when I'm watching a movie makes it. Great, yeah. Because I can watch these big tent pole blockbusters and sit through it and not feel a thing and not give a shit. And I can, I that's for ninety. It's for so many movies. And yes. if you can feel anything, that's the hallmark of something being great. Yep. Even if it's bad, even if because watching Uncut Gems, which is probably my one of my favorite movies ever, my favorite movie it's watching. So, but the whole time you're like, what the fuck? I know the whole time. Yeah, you feel tense, you feel on edge, you're angry at this fucking shithead for, yeah. you know, not getting his life together. And he's just fucking up the whole time. Yeah. But, dude, yeah, man. The fact that you feel it... The whole time. ...makes it great. Absolutely. That's, what's, I mean, that's that, what's awesome that's, about it. That's art. You're Who experiencing a thing. Have you ever watched The Sopranos? No, I haven't. Okay. I should watch it. Uh, everybody's least favorite character is Tony Soprano's sister, Janice. Okay. But that's because she's the best actress. She's the best written character and the best actress in the You're entire supposed show. to not like You're her. You're supposed to hate her. And that's the most impressive You're acting. supposed to hate her. Yeah. I've viscerally... I've watched that show 10 times, top to bottom. I viscerally hate this woman. Ida Turturro, amazing actress. Yeah. If I ever meet her, I'll tell her. I was like, I've never hated anybody. You're, you're the best actress. And that's so impressive. Because I've never felt... I've never felt something... More than the way I hate Janice. More than like a real human. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, it's great. that's incredibly. Yeah. She does such a great job of being of of eliciting an emotion Just from being you. such an asshole. And if it has to be a bad <laughs> yeah. emotion, fine. Mm-hmm. You know, that's honestly better. Good. You know, I don't know. I don't watch feel good shit and feel good. Is the villain? Are those the best actors? Like the the villains that really make you hate them? Are those like the yes. best actors? A thousand percent. Dude, movie villains are the best. Yes. Yeah. Um. I mean, Kathy Bates in Misery. Yeah. You, you, Kathy Bates in Misery. Jan Soprano. I'm just gonna only list women because I'm sexist. Um. <laughs> Walter White's wife. No, yeah. I'm kidding. Uh. But uh. You know. Yeah. The villains. Ray Fiennes in uh, Schindler's List. Mm-hmm. Despicable. Dude. Uh. Homie from Inglorious Bastards. Christoph Waltz oh my in Inglorious God. Bastards. The scariest. The first five minutes of that film. Somehow the scariest villain, but just looks, but that is just a guy. Yeah. Like somehow so terrifying. That's and he's, a, that's he, great he's like a polite villain too. He's like manipulative. He's like so charming with his like villainness that like you're, you're not sure if he's a villain or not. Yeah. But and yeah, absolutely insane. Yeah. yeah. And you're right. He's just a guy, which actually is a really great commentary on Nazis is that, you know, Nazis are not evil aliens from outer space. This is a Nazi podcast. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is the history no, of Nazis oh, podcast. History. Yeah. yeah. You got to say history. Oh, of sorry. First. I, yeah. You're yeah, fucking you're right. it up for, for everybody. <laughs> um, that's why we're not in the regular studios. That makes sense. Too yeah. much Nazi shit on the wall. Yeah, so we, I didn't want to take it all down. Yeah, so we moved. There's a lot. We moved to the break room there's at the top lot. of the Chrysler building. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. People, you know, a lot of movies portray Nazis as like, I mean, again, obviously they're evil. That's obvious. But mm. they are not evil space aliens, not from here. They, they're humans. They're people. Humans. Yeah, they're like, people. And a lot of them were just a guy. Yeah. Like, People are so close to thinking and being that way, like way yeah. too close. Well, yeah, it's it's yeah, exactly. They're it's closer than they should be. Yeah, for sure. But that's that's the thing. It, it's it 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 got there. It's possible to get there. Again, these are not these are not like aliens with completely different percep- superpowers. Yeah, 
or completely yeah. different perspectives. It's just they per- are, persuasion. That's how. Yeah. That's you know the man is the ultimate evil. Yeah, and we want, and maybe that was like the scariest part about that. That is easily the scariest part. Yeah, Ray finds like again the accessibility uh, of it. Ray finds yeah. as Gert, you know, Amon Gerter in mm-hmm. uh, Schindler's List is he's a evil piece of shit, and it's like you can't believe a human being would be like that. Yeah, um, you know, it's crazy. It, you know, it, uh, any slavery movie is like wildly. Yeah, don't forget. Slave owners, Nazi, all the people. That's why Tarantino is such a genius. Yeah, because he gets, he he excuses his violence by making it against people you can't feel sorry for. That's true. Inglorious Bastards, wild violence, but it's against Nazis. Who's going to complain? Very true. Django Unchained against slave owners. That whole ending scene, like, this is unnecessarily violent. Oh, really? You don't think we should be violent against slave owners? Oh, I see what you're saying. I also love Tarantino because, like, he doubles down on his movies and his, like, artistic expression. Like, yeah, in interviews, when he's, like, questioned about something that, like, might seem like, well, you did do this. He's like, go fuck yourself. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. like, he's the best. No, I intentionally did everything I did for a reason. He's the absolute. Yeah. yeah. He's, like he's the best. He's the most stylistic director. I could talk about him for yeah years. Um, I'll listen to any interview with him. Yeah. I'm currently listening to, he did WTF with Mark Marin, which I don't think I've really listened to much of Mark Marin, but Marin's I'm, thing. I mean, Marin's, you know, whatever. I, I love Marin, yeah. but he sucks. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, I don't know. I remember. I remember Marin from when he sucked. As yeah. a, I remember. Mar- I remember. I was a fan of Marin when he had to quit comedy because he was unsuccessful. I was his fan, <laughs> uh, but even then, not that much of it. He's a you know whatever. Marin sure. sucks, but he's great. But he sucks. Um, but he gets good guests. So I, I mentioned this on a previous. Yeah, pod. I've heard. The, I've heard you mention talk. Oh, about on the this. last dual one, and I then, was like, yeah, because I, 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 I listened to that episode and I was yeah. like, actually, I don't think I'd like because you, 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 you like read us or like. We're talking I don't about know. Uh, no, like he was more popular than Rogan at some point. I'm like, I oh, WTF was the I, biggest thing on earth. I did not know that. Yeah, Obama did WTF that's at the height per- of its power. That's yeah, pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah, Obama was a sitting president at the time, I think, too. So yeah, it was big. Um, all right. Anyway, the the VFX team, five people. F- this movie is made by small a small group of people that care. So please go watch everything everywhere all at once. Um, June fourth, it's available for rent, video on demand. I can't recommend this movie enough. Yeah, I, w- I would say pay these motherfuckers, man. Like pay to rent it. Oh yeah. You know, like don't like if you can like pay to rent it. Like I would because like, um, for any like negative commentary we had, I think it's worth like watching and buying. It's a hundred percent. Or like yeah. A hundred percent. And the other thing that like, again, I'm, you know, as a, as a, well, as a acclaimed beloved film podcaster, I'm on Twitter at Nick Tazo and I'm in film spheres of Twitter and you see, again, you're, it's a constant battle. That must with, be a shit show. It's a constant battle with just Marvel fans. Yeah. And when, uh, Marvel Doctor Strange 2 mm-hmm. multiverse movie mm-hmm. came out and made like a hundred million dollars in its first weekend or something like that. And again, crazy nonsense bullshit. And you know, there, I, I saw one guy on Twitter was like, was like, yeah, the you know, Doctor Strange multiverse, hundred million, uh, everything everywhere all at once, 27 million at the time. It was yeah. like. Guess who's the real king of the multiverse? It's like, that's insane to just root for. That's like rooting for Budweiser to make more money than your local. Well, it's rooting for money that you don't even make. Yeah. It, which is the ultimate control. Rooting like, for like a imagine, corporation. Y- y- you have no, you're doing advertising for no reason, you know, which is like the most stupid yeah. person thing you could do. Yeah. Again, Everything everywhere all at once is made by that's your brewery down the street. Yeah, you know, Last Stand Brewery. Um, yeah, real ale. You know, that's like a craft brew. And this guy is like, hell yeah, Budweiser kicked your teeth in. Like you're, you know, you're okay. You're rooting for 
international beverage conglomerate InBev, which yeah. is, you know, I mean, it's just, it's crazy to to that people th- people think that way. But Marvel fans are you have a mental illness, shit. <laughs> and the fucking camera died. God damn it. All right. The last part of this is just going to be we're going to wrap only it up. audio. Yeah, oh, audio only. Jimmy, where can the folks find you? Okay, uh, at Sleepy Cowboy TX and at Bad Thrillers TX, um, and uh, Danger Junior. Uh, I think it's fucking or at Danger Junior uh, PR. I believe. Yep, at Danger um, Danger Junior PR. I believe. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, we I do a comedy podcast and uh, make some music. And uh, that's how Tazo and I found each other, doing some music stuff uh, from back in the day. And, uh, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks again for helping me out. Absolutely, I appreciate man. it. Anytime. Uh, Anything you need. I think, ever. I think, folks, I'm pointing to the camera that's off now. <laughs> I think you're going to be seeing a lot more of Jimmy D on yeah, this podcast. Yeah, great. Let's do it. Uh, I, so I don't know. Now much, that I have a rotating I don't cast know of hosts. much about film, but I, I like to I like to be loud about my opinions, Perfect. especially on things I don't know about. That's exactly what I'm going for <laughs> is uneducated and loud. Yeah. For for just just kind of firing off. Passion is more important than it's, facts. It's louder than facts. This is a QAnon. Podcast. Yeah, this is a QAnon History Nazi podcast. Our our passion is yeah. more important than your facts. Yeah, facts are honestly lame. I don't want to talk to anybody that actually knows. Don't about tell movies. me. Yeah, don't tell me stats. Don't tell me like, oh, you know, it's interesting that this. If you say it's yeah. interesting that this, I don't want to know. It's it. not interesting. It's that not that. interesting than that. So, all right. Yeah, at Space Cowboy ATX on Instagram. Yes. At Bad Thrillers ATX on Instagram. Uh, Bad Thrillers TX, Sleepy Cowboy TX, and Danger Junior PR. Um, yeah, we're we're doing a lot of stuff. But, all on uh, the gram. Yeah. Okay, As gram. usual, I'm your host at Nick Tazo Drums on Instagram at Nick Tazo. Follow me on Letterboxd on all kinds of stuff. Um, oh, this is coming out Thursday the 26th, which means Friday the 27th. You can you can listen to. The Odd Bodies with me Yay. and my boy Davey Wild at Davey Dot Wild. Very excited for that man. It's gonna be yeah, sick. I'm You're stoked. gonna love it. I can't wait for you to I hear it. I can't wait. I love hearing Dave on anything, man. He's the best. Yeah, he's so good. Yeah, he's a he's a little little Davy little Davy Water Socks is a <laughs> is a visionary. Yeah. So we're gonna hear some great stuff from him. Uh and me and my buddy uh John Justice at Thank the Maker Zero. Hell yeah. Um uh, on Friday. But anyway. Thanks so much, everybody. Let's get trashed. We'll see you next week. Cheers.